Hi everyone, this is Sarah Cornish from My Four Hands Photography. I'm going to do a quick overview with you on the basics of actions. Um, I've had kind of an influx of first time actions users lately and I absolutely love that and I wanted to kind of do a little something to aid you whether you're, you're new or you're used to actions, maybe it'll give a little insight on how I use actions, um, kind of what an action is because I get that a lot too, what's a Photoshop action, things like that. So to start off, a Photoshop action is basically a bunch of steps in Photoshop recorded. Um, I make my actions and I record my steps and then I bundle them up nicely and I send them off to you guys. Um, these are all actually Photoshop actions. Um, this is your box, this is what your actions kind of look like once you get them installed into your program. To install them, there is directions in most of the action sets when you purchase them. There's also a fabulous fact resource from Texas Blog Chick. Um, my site links to hers. She covers everything. I mean, she covers different Elements versions, which Elements is a bit more tricky to install. And actually, sometimes you might have to troubleshoot or, you know, it's just not like a one-size-fits-all deal. So if you, if you need help, please, please refer to that fact page on my website so that you can get her link because she is amazing. Um, to install actions in Photoshop CS5, all you have to do is double click them. They've made it super easy. I absolutely love CS5 for that reason. And CS3 as well, I mean all I used to do was keep a folder with my favorite actions on my desktop and then as I needed them I would drag them into my Photoshop. Um, and a lot of people ask how I organize my actions. Um, I don't really organize my actions, but what you can do and what I have done in the past is put like a folder of my favorite ones that I use most the time and I would stick it on my desktop or somewhere easy to find and then I would just drag them into Photoshop as I need them. The only thing to consider is if you were to do it that way, you want to make sure that you close out of Photoshop properly so when you open it up again, they're there for you. Because sometimes if Photoshop crashes on you or if you were to close out wrong, it, it won't record those actions being there and you'll have to reinstall them next time you open up. So that's just something to consider. I also strongly encourage my customers and anyone that uses any actions, not just mine, to um, make sure that you back everything up on your external hard drive, on a disk, however you do it, that, just like you would your photos. Because if something happens to your computer, you want to make sure you still have those. You paid for them. You know, a lot of times I don't mind resetting links, but you can save yourself quite a bit of, you know, heartache and headache, not having to contact all different people and everything. So that's just something to think about. Um, so to get started on Actions, once you have them installed, they're going to look like this. And I make various different types. Some are helper actions, some are creative actions. A creative action is something that's going to give you an artistic look to your photos. Um, a, a helper action or a workflow action is something that's going to help edit your photos. You know, whether they need to be lightened, you want to edit the eyes, the skin, things of that nature. Um, you can use them in conjunction, you can use them alone, whether you're a clean processor or a vintage processor, however you do it, there's something for everyone. So what I'm going to do is, this is a photo from one of my sessions last summer. I'm going to give you just a quick idea. Um, one of my most popular sets is Hippy Dippy Trippy and Just Love is one of my favorite actions of all time. Um, I'm going to run this. What you're going to do to run the action is just open this folder. It's going to show a ton of actions. You're going to click on the action that you like, that you want to run, and you push play. And already you see a big difference. Um, there's tabs up here. If you were to click before and after, it kind of gives you an idea. And my actions also duplicate the main photo layer. And I know that if you use Bridge or Lightroom, that can cause issues. So to, to avoid that, all you have to do is, let's say that you wanted to run it on the main photo layer. Instead of clicking, because on every single action, this is the very first step, duplicate first document. Just skip that. Go down to the second step, and instead of running the action from the top, just run it from there and you'll see it doesn't duplicate. If you look up here, see? So, with that in mind, we're going to move on. If you open the group, most layers are grouped, some aren't. Let's say that your layers aren't grouped. All you have to do is see where it says layer and then 
group layers. Just make sure all the layers that you want to group are selected. Now, with this group, when you open it up, there are a ton of layers in here. You can tweak any that you like. You can remove some, you can play with the opacity of the layers, you can even actually go into the actual layer and you can adjust what's there as well. Whatever you like. It's, it's totally, totally all customizable. And some, you know, might feel that tweaking kind of ruins the integrity of the action, but I disagree. I think that it's really good to take an action and give it your own feel and your own vibe. And because you're making it about your photography, not mine, you know. So now what I'm going to show you, because I flattened, is I'm going to show you how to run a helper action on top of a creative action. If you were to go into the toolbox and run, say, soft pop, see, it just gives a nice little contrast there, and you can reduce the opacity. If you were to go into a very My Forehand toolbox, there's another contrast that's kind of cleaner. It's a little lighter, a little more airy. There's no color involved, and you know, so it's not going to change the tonality of your photo. Um, if you wanted to tweak your actions without using other actions, you would just go into your adjustment layers. These are all your adjustment layers. I use selective color a lot. And if you see where it says colors here, you can actually go into certain channels or colors in the photos and tweak those. See if I were to up the yellow, you notice the skin tone gets warmer. And if you were to pull the blacks down, you see it's less contrast on the skin. That's just one thing to consider. Now if you wanted to run two creative actions, you can certainly do that. Um, sometimes running two creative actions can actually change the whole dynamic of your photo. It can kind of add new life. It can give you more versatility and, and you know if you were to go into say the sweetheart collection and we'll we'll play a little sunshine this is the sweetheart collection too actually now it's very vintage you can reduce the whole group layer you can go in and change these whatever you like you know there's just many many things you can do so that's just that's the basics that's kind of how it works um, I can't really think of anything else to cover now, but if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer when I can. Um, I also am going to be offering creative mentorships. They're basically three to four hour one-on-one -on -one just on Photoshop processing. It doesn't cover um, any kind of photography related questions or business related questions, but I have mentorships for that as well um, that span over days. So um, if you are you would like to work one-on-one -on -one with me and have me kind of go through, you know, a workflow, help you find a workflow, show you how I work, maybe even play with one of your own photos with you. That's definitely something that we can arrange. So, um, you can email me at sarah at myforehandsphotography.com and that's F-O-U-R and, you know, we can set something up for that as well. Um, well, I think that pretty much covers it though and like I said, there's there's so many possibilities so many things that you can do so I'll definitely be covering more of those in future tutorials I hope that you have a fabulous day and um, I hope that you're warm where you're at because we're getting dumped with so much snow my kids are actually getting off early so have a great day thanks bye